Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and you're gonna be nicer to bank workers after watching this video. But you didn't give me a pin. A customer came in last week to get a new debit card because he had lost his. We have an instant issue machine so no big deal. We printed him a new one right away and let him set a pin on our electronic keypad. The card was ready for use when he walked out the door. The following conversation took place about two hours later when he called into the branch and I answered the phone. Good afternoon, thank you for calling the bank. My name is Dat Yarn though, how can I help you today? You're the lady that gave me a new card earlier, right? You forgot to give me a pin number. Sir, you sent your new pin on our electronic keypad when your card was printing? Your card should be ready for use. Did you have an issue using it somewhere? No, I haven't used it yet because you didn't write down my number for me. I'm sorry, but it's not possible for me to retrieve that for you, for security reasons. No one should ever know your pin, not even the bank, that's why we have you set it yourself in branch. I didn't do that. I'm not sure what you mean. Do you remember the keypad thing I handed you and asked you to select a four digit number and then hit the green button and then enter once more to confirm? Yes. Whatever you typed into that keypad is now your new pin. You can use it when you make purchases. But I don't have one. You didn't give it to me. How am I supposed to go to the store? I'm really sorry for the inconvenience. Would you like the number for our automated phone line that will allow you to reset a forgotten pin? It's really easy to use, you just need to enter some information from your card. I didn't forget it. You never gave me one. Why can't you just give me one? Wash, rinse, repeat. I think he ended up going to a different branch the next day to set a new pin again. Do you guys remember that scene from Spongebob where Man Ray tries to give Patrick's wallet back? That's pretty much what I kept picturing during this exchange. Instead of running around in circles, I probably would have just offered to post him out a pin number. Did banks used to write down customers' pin numbers? Because that seems a bit crazy to me. <laughs> Everyone in the branch is calling in, and we're short-staffed as it is. So, my branch is in a totally effed condition. We're a small branch, and fully staffed is just six people. The branch manager, service manager, banker, and three tellers. I'm a teller. Our branch manager got terminated a couple of months ago due to an incident of very poor judgement. One of our tellers quit a month later, leaving just the four of us to run the branch coming into the very busy tourist season. The service manager got promoted to branch manager, so yay, except now we don't have a service manager. Ads are out for hiring, but the only person who has made it past the pre-screening for an interview for teller wasn't suitable in the end, so it's been real fun lately. Yesterday, I got to work to find that the other teller and the banker both called in, so it was just me and the branch manager to run a busy Monday. We got someone sent over from another branch to help, but the nearest branch is 100 miles away, so she didn't get there until midday. It was chaos, but we managed, and everything balanced at the end of the day, so it was all good. Which brings me to today. My six-year-old daughter wakes me up at four in the morning, and she's burning up, running a fever. I resigned myself to having to call in today, and I'm praying the other two who called in yesterday don't also try to call in. I text my manager to let her know, and it turns out that the other teller did also call in. What ensues is a flurry of calls between me and the branch manager, and the branch manager with her district manager, because a teller is needed to open the vault. I'm asked to come in for half the day at least until someone can come in and help us, and the district manager was allowing me to bring my sick child with me. I was just like, okay, fine. Pack up the kid, I'm about to head out the door, when my kid starts clutching at her stomach saying it hurts, and then she runs to the bathroom to throw up. I call my branch manager, and tell her I'm not bringing my throwing up child to work with me. In the end, I had to run down to the branch. My husband was with the kid, but he had to work too and his work situation is just as effed as mine, but at least I get paid time off. I opened the vault, get the jewel keys out so the branch manager and the banker could run the branch without me, and then I went home. I'm hoping their help from the other branch gets there soon because I'm feeling guilty that I had to call in when I'm so desperately needed. But then I get mad at myself for feeling that way because doesn't my sick kid desperately need her mum too? If the branch has to close for the day due to lack of staffing, how is that my fault? I couldn't help that my kid got sick. If I was the sick one, I would have still dragged myself to work, but my kid is a different story. Anyways, I'm just sitting here at home reflecting and I needed to share my story with someone, so thanks for reading. She shouldn't feel guilty at all for taking a sick day because of her daughter. Your family comes first. I know it sucks for the people who have to work short staff, but maybe they need to be a bit more aggressive about recruitment. Clueless customer causes commotion in my cranium. This has to be the weirdest customer experience I've ever had, and I've been working with customers and clients for 37 years. Our story starts with my three fellow tellers and I all engaged with customers. 
This older lady in her 60s comes up and asks the customer in my neighbor's window which window she needs to go to. My neighbouring teller tries to explain that she needs to wait at the sign that says, wait here please, and someone will call her when they're available. This takes like 5 minutes because she doesn't seem to understand. Eventually though, she gets it and waits at the sign, and wouldn't you know it, but I'm done with my customer. Yay. I call her over. She hands me our bank's credit card and whispers that she wants to take $240 out of her account and put $200 on her credit card. And you want the $40 cash back, I ask? She stares at me. You want to take $240 out of your savings or checking? Make it $300, she says. Okay, $300 out of your checking or savings, I ask. By this point I've brought up her account in our system and she only has a savings account but she still hasn't answered either of my questions. Okay, I say. I see you only have a savings account, so you want $300 out of your savings, put $200 on your credit card, and the rest you want cash back, is that correct? Make it $340. Okay, $200 still on your credit card? Yep, she replied. She actually answered a question. I press my luck, and $140 cash back. She stares at me. Okay. I get started with the appropriate paperwork and ask her for ID. My what? She asks. ID. Identification with your picture on it. You know, like a driver's license or a state ID card. Realization dawns on her face as she digs into her purse and pulls out a small box, unlatches the box and pulls out her ID. While handing it to me, she remarks, I don't know why you need my ID. I've been banking at this bank for 15 years, even though I've never been to this branch before. I kid you not. Those were her exact words. It left me nearly speechless. All I could say was, thank you. I finished the transaction, handed her ID, credit card, cash and receipts and bid her a good day thinking the craziness was finally over. Not quite. She turns away from my window and starts heading towards one of our offices and says, and I quote, Where's the front door? Y'all, there is nothing between the teller's window and the front door. The offices are to either side of the lobby, yet this woman got lost on her way there. It was at this moment that my brain exploded and I died. I'm coming, Elizabeth. I hope that lady was okay. It doesn't sound like she had a good grasp of her surroundings or what she was doing there, and continuously upping the amount she wanted to withdraw would raise a small red flag for me. What do you guys think? Pissed off over one dollar. This is my first post, sorry for any errors, TLDRs at the bottom. I work at a small branch for a regional bank inside of a grocery store. Last week, a youngish guy came in asking for a page of blank checks for a business account. He was a signer on the account. Cool, no problem. I start the process and ask him how he's going to pay for it as we charge a dollar per sheet, four checks total. I'll mention now that he has been on the phone for our entire interaction so far. I notice he's holding a debit card, but it's not one of ours. He tries to hand it to me, so I ask him if it's a card for our bank. Nope. He thinks I can take the money off his card. I can't. I explain to him three different ways that I have no way to access the funds on his card. However, I can take the one dollar out of the business account. He gets all huffy and says he'll be back, storming off and yelling on the phone in another language. Assuming he just went to the ATM or to get cash back from the grocery store checkout, I direct a couple of customers to my co-workers while I fill out the ticket for the $1 this guy is hopefully bringing back so I can print his checks and he can be on his way. He comes back a few minutes later, still on the phone, and hands me a pile of change. Oh boy. I count it multiple times just to double check, but he only gave me 95 cents. With my best customer service voice, I ask him, Do you have another five cents? He huffs some more, shouts, Are you kidding me? before storming off again. Nope, I'm not kidding. It's one dollar, so I actually do need one dollar to give you your checks. He comes back after another minute and tosses a nickel on the counter. I take it, print his checks, and he's gone without saying another word to me. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. If you're going to be interacting with someone, anyone, don't be on your phone. I remember working at a cafe before and being on the till and the amount of people who would be on their phones talking to someone while trying to pay for their food or motion for something and expect you to understand their flailing arms and mouthing nonsense to you was one of the most aggravating parts of that job. Just tell the person on the phone that you'll be with them in a minute. It's really not that hard. <laughs> okay, so that's all for r slash tales from your bank. I really hope you did enjoy it. As always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. My Twitter, Discord and Patreon links are in the description, and any support is greatly appreciated. And as it's Sunday, I also want to say a massive thank you to my wonderful patrons. Backwards D-Dog, Tyler Miller, Jens Banning, 
Kit McCutcheon, Skylar A., Elizabeth Fillmore, Two Chicks, and Jen Burton. Thank you so much for your support. Mwah. That's for you, but keep it between us, okay? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye!